when magical spells take the form of musical tunes to provide numerous buffs, debuffs, shields, and more, this is what you get. Hey there, friends, it's Livid here, and welcome to Legacy Gaming. Today, we're diving into Lost Ark and sharing our ultimate guide for the Bard. We plan on doing many class guides for Lost Ark. Our first Sorceress Guide is already up on the channel, and you can check that out right now. Our goal is to give you as much insight about a class as we can, and help you figure out if it's the right one for you to main. This is not an endgame build guide. Those will come later, in separate videos. The reason being that they're going to take a lot more time and experience to put together, especially when we don't even have the true endgame content unlocked just yet. Lumping all of this into one video just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So if you're new to Lost Ark, or just looking to create a new character, but don't want to wait till you reach level cap to see if it's any good, you've come to the right place. Let's start at the top. Why play the Bard? For everyone out there that loves to support a team in group content with shields, AoE buffs, debuffs, and even heals at times, this is where the Bard is an absolute ace in the support category. The Bard is even capable of tackling solo content through numerous AoE damaging spells, while remaining quite tanky through all of her shielding spells as a trade-off for lower DPS. Many of her abilities have additional utility that disrupt enemy movement, either at a base level or via a tripod, and that helps you keep distance between enemies and your allies. Now the Bard does, however, lack forms of mobility with her spells, meaning you will be relying on your shields, blink dash, and positioning 99% of the time. Additionally, the Bard's special class resource comes in the form of the Serenade Meter. When using skills and dealing damage to enemies, you'll fill up a max of three bars that enable the use of Serenade of Courage, a team-wide buff that increases the damage of the Bard and all party members, or Serenade of Salvation, a potent AoE burst heal for all party members that stand in it. For each bar that is filled before use, the potency of the chosen skill increases. Additionally, this resource can be gained even faster through tripods that grant melody increase. If you're someone that's been looking for a real support class, a true magic user that isn't afraid to be right up in the action while protecting their teammates, then the Bard is the class for you. When it comes to building out a Bard, it really comes down to two things. Having a mobbing build, one where you can focus on dealing damage to all ranges of enemies, both big and small, and a group support build, where you instead shift most of your kit to keeping you, and more importantly, your teammates, alive through whatever might come their way. Instead of going through each ability individually, we're going to focus on the builds themselves, as that's ultimately going to be more valuable for you as a player. Now the mobbing build that we're going to talk about could also be considered viable for leveling, so keep that in mind if you're picking up the Bard for the first time. When it comes to mobbing and leveling, the Bard actually has a ton of tools at her disposal. They aren't by any means the best DPS skills in the game, but they certainly get the job done, even better when in a group. Now there are a few abilities that really stand out as essential when approaching this type of content, but I also want to point out that when leveling, don't try to rush max out a skill right away. Spread your points around, increasing skills to level 4 for their first tripods until you have enough total points to respec and fully upgrade a different skill. Now this will keep you on power curve and give you more options early on. Dissonance is hands down the single most effective skill that you will use for clearing most mobs in the game. And even better, it's one that you have access to right from the start. After a short cast and delay, a clash of musical notes will land at the target location dealing at a base level moderate damage every 0.5 seconds for 5 seconds and reducing the movement speed of all enemies caught in it by 60%. With a 5 second duration and only an 8 second cooldown that starts the moment you cast it, you're looking at a highly spammable skill that gets insane with correct tripod allocation. For tripods, I highly recommend Melody Increase, Law of the Jungle, and Harmony Enhancement. The goal here is to not only increase your resource generation for your serenade meter on large groups of enemies, but also massively increase the damage. Law of the Jungle doubles the damage against named foes or lower. Now in Lost Ark, enemy tiers typically go normal, elite, named, boss, and so on. As a result, this damage buff will apply to most enemies that you come across, especially while leveling. And this gets further multiplied by Harmony Enhancement, making this a spammable CC that tears through groups of enemies. Soundholic is the second most important skill that you will max out as it can chew through higher HP enemies and bosses once you have it spec'd out correctly. This ability will fire a blinding ray of light, dealing damage for 3 seconds in the direction that you're casting, locking you in place but allowing you to rotate. Now don't get too used to rotating your beam and instead 
get used to just lining your enemies up for this attack, since one of the tripods that we will take will prevent you from turning. Now for tripods, I highly recommend sound concentration, sustain enhancement, and focus fire. To make this attack hit like a truck, sound concentration and sustain enhancement will boost your damage per hit, your channel duration, and the amount of times that it hits during that time. Now this is important because this helps offset the negatives of focus fire. While it prevents you from moving and halves your duration, you instead get a massive 700% damage bonus. And believe me when I say, this is absolutely noticeable. Stigma is another skill that shreds all mobs just as well as dissonance, but with a downside of a cooldown that is twice as long. But that's perfectly fine when weaving in between all of your other skills. Stigma, after a brief casting period, will place a pulsating AoE that not only staggers, but does increased damage every time it pulses. For tripods, we take Sustain Enhancement, Brilliant Stigma, and Pain Brand. Now, Sustain Enhancement gives us two extra pulses, which means even higher scaling damage, but also does 35% more damage to enemies when you aren't in a party. Now, that's perfect for leveling and an incredible four-point value skill early on. Brilliant Stigma will make it so all enemies within the AoE will be marked, meaning anything that hits them while marked will amp that damage by an additional 10%. Finally, Pain Brand, which will make the damage that each pulse increases go from 12.5% to a massive 60%. Like I said, this skill absolutely melts enemies. Heavenly Tune is another essential ability that from initial first glance seems like a purely group-oriented skill, with its ability to increase attack speed by 8% and MP recovery by 40% for 8 seconds for all party members in a 24 meter AoE, in addition to its decent burst damage. Now this, however, isn't why we take it. The real bonus is in the tripods. Quick Prep, Courageous Tune, and Intense Tune. Quick Prep shaves off 3 seconds from a massive 30 second cooldown. A small amount, but 3 seconds is 3 seconds. Courageous Tune makes it so all enemies hit by your AoE do 30% less damage. And against larger elites and bosses, this is invaluable to both the solo player and a group. Last up, and the real reason why we max this skill out, is Intense Tune. This will increase all party members' attack power by 15% of the caster's default attack power. And as a bard, this means all of your other abilities for the next 8 seconds deal increased damage. This will amp your big hitting skills like Sound Holic, Dissonance, and Stigma. The last skill that we're maxing out is Wind of Music. Its base effect is really nothing to write home about, just doing some minor AoE damage and pushing enemies back. Jumping straight into the tripods, however, shows us why we use this skill through pickups like Quick Prep, Melody Increase, and Wind of Protection. Now Quick Prep shaves 2 seconds off an 18 second cooldown. Melody Increase gives us an extra 150% serenade meter generation every time we cast this ability, which we'll be doing quite a lot. And finally, Wind of Protection, which will grant you and all party members hit by the AoE a shield that can absorb damage up to 25% of their max HP. With that last tripod, hopefully the value is abundantly clear. Finally, let's touch on the three remaining skills that are great pickups for only four points invested into each. Sonic Vibration is another immensely useful skill that, as I just mentioned, doesn't need more than four points to prove how useful it is. It provides you with a solid utility, weak point damage, and AoE control, both solo and in a group. After a short cast duration, foes will be lifted at the target location, dealing moderate damage, followed quickly by slamming them back down to the ground for high damage leaving behind an AoE that also does additional tick damage for 3 seconds. For tripods, we simply take Protective Vibration. When your orb slams down, you will gain a decent sized shield for 3 seconds, but also increase the damage of the skill by 5% up to 30% for each enemy that's caught in the AoE. This gives the bard a bit more breathing room in fights, while also chunking down a large group of enemies in the process. Now we pick up Soundwave simply for the quick enemy knockback if you're getting pushed into a corner with low stagger. With only 4 points of investment into excellent mobility, you also gain one of your only ways of being a little more mobile on the field. This will make it so the bard moves away from the casting position of Soundwave by 4.5 meters, giving you either a quick dodge or a way to put some distance between you and your enemy. Finally, Sound Shot. This skill is great just for poke damage on larger enemies, as you fire on an orb of light that explodes on impact dealing moderate damage to both the target and any enemies in a small AoE. For the tripod, I personally prefer a maintained explosion, as the orb of light will now leave behind debris upon explosion that lingers for 2 seconds, dealing an additional 30% damage to enemies that are in it. It's great chip damage on a low 6 second cooldown, that also gets the benefit of Heavenly Tune. 
Once you unlock your awakening abilities, you have an important choice to make. Which of the two spells do you take with you to tackle mobbing content? Now, Oratorio, which in addition to dealing a massive amount of AoE holy damage, lowers enemy crit resistance by 12% against attacks from all party members. And when it comes to boss DPS checks later down the road, it's clear why this skill is valuable. Symphonia, on the other hand, is a better awakening skill for clutch saves and fights, as it grants a shield to every ally within 12 meters that absorbs damage equal to 100% of your max HP. It also does great burst damage, lowers enemy attack power by 30%, enemy attack speed by 20%, and enemy move speed by 40%, all for 10 seconds. It also completely fills one of your serenade bubbles, which is useful for when you need that resource generation in a pinch. Now both are incredibly potent abilities, but for me, I choose Symphonia almost every time. Now that we've covered the mobbing build, let's shift focus and talk about the group support build. Again, a support build is meant to dedicate more resources to keeping you and your party alive through almost anything, as long as everyone is mindful of their positioning. Now let's quickly go over the skills that we are keeping from the mobbing build and their tripod layouts, so it's quick and easy for you to see. Wind of Music keeps quick prep, melody increase, and wind of protection as it's an essential shielding skill that also generates Serenade Meter. Heavenly Tune comes over with a slight change, instead using Quick Prep, Tough Tune, and Intense Tune. Instead of the 30% attack power decrease on mobs, we're opting for an 8% increase to attack speed to help both your DPS characters pump out more damage and increase spell casting speed. Sonic Vibration, a personal favorite of mine, gets its entire tripod tree this time around, opting for a protective vibration, brilliant wave, and wide angle attack. This allows us to not only give ourselves a shield in a pinch, but now has a 40% larger area of effect and provides a 15% attack power buff to all party members that enter either the vibration or the aftermath area for two seconds, which is perfect for when you see a DPS character charging up a hard hitting attack. Just drop this right near them and let them go to work. Soundholic we unfortunately downgrade to its first tier tripod, Sound Concentration, which still gives us decent damage boost for when we need just a little bit more damage in the group. Since this is the Bard's hardest hitting spell, if you personally want more damage, swapping the point spread between Sonic Vibration and Soundholic is a perfectly acceptable solution, especially if the Bard needs to contribute more damage throughout a fight. As you get more skill points later on, I would certainly recommend maxing this skill out as well. Dissonance we also downgrade to one tripod, Melody Increase. This gives us a way to keep a ticking damage ability on enemies or bosses consistently, and allowing our Serenade Meter to continuously generate resources. The last three skills in our support build are new additions entirely, the first two being essential, and the third is swappable for an alternate ability depending on your situation. Guardian Tune is an ability that you get when unlocking your first awakening, and it's an essential support skill that at a base level provides a 30% damage reduction to all party members within a 24 meter radius for 8 seconds. I don't think I need to emphasize how good that already is. For tripods, we max this out and take Tenacity, Endless Protection, and Wind of Protection. Tenacity ensures that you don't get staggered for basic attacks while casting this ability, as it becomes crucial to get off in a pinch. Endless Protection further ups the defensive nature of the spell by making it so when the buff expires after its full duration, the players affected will also receive a shield with a capacity of 15% of their max HP for an additional 8 seconds. And if that wasn't enough, Wind of Protection makes it so when Guardian Tune is cast, it will also completely block a debuff modifier allowing your team to negate effects completely, almost like a preemptive purge. Next up, Rhythm Buckshot has you pull the string of your harp to deal moderate damage and knock foes away from you in a frontal cone. For tripods, we simply take Melody Increase to generate more serenade meter each time this skill is used. This, however, isn't why we picked this skill up. As a support in hard content, you will often need to assist in countering enemy attacks to open up damage windows for your team or prevent mechanics altogether. With a 16 second cooldown, this enables the Bard to counter mechanics and contribute to weak point damage instances. It's a vital ability to both have and learn when to use. As I mentioned earlier, this last spell can be swappable with one that comes directly after this. Rhapsody of Light is one of the few spells that needs the Bard to remain stationary to cast. At a base level, Rhapsody of Light merely does 3 ticks of moderate damage in an AoE. It's with the tripods that this skill becomes an offensive buff and a quick save mechanic. For tripods, we take Quick Prep, Note Brand, and Shining Protection. Now Quick Prep just shaves 2 seconds off a 24 second cooldown. Note Brand makes it so that if this attack is hitting an enemy, you mark that target for 3 seconds and all incoming damage is increased by 10% from all party members. 
Shining Protection, however, is the real reason that we use this skill. This will reduce your outgoing damage by 50%, but reduce incoming damage on the Bard by 50% as well. As for your party members, this will reduce incoming damage to them by 75% for 3 seconds and grant them a shield equal to 10% of their max HP. Like I said, this can absolutely save your party. If you personally aren't finding great use out of Rhapsody of Light, consider using Harp of Rhythm instead, primarily in single target boss fights. Here you will summon a stationary harp that functions basically like a turret, firing musical notes at targets within 14 meters of it. As a base level skill, it's nothing to write home about, but once again, the tripods make this skill incredibly useful. Here we take Summoning Will, Melody Increase, and Note Brand. This 24 second cooldown skill with Summoning Will provides you with a harp that remains on the field for 14 seconds, leaving it with only a 10 second downtime. Now while it's on the field, Melody Increase will make it generate Serenade Meter resources every second, making this a super consistent way to fill those bubbles up. Additionally, Note Brand, the same effect that Rhapsody of Light provides, will continuously be applied to the target, meaning you could potentially have between 14 to 16 seconds of 10% damage increase for your entire party and remain mobile. Like I said, it's incredibly useful, but more on the aggressive side of things. And just like that, Support Bard's skill build is complete with options. While I won't spend a ton of time talking about the additional spells the Bard has access to, I think they're worth pointing out and at least explaining why we don't need to use them. Conviction Core is a purely offensive skill where you surround yourself with a few energy cores. Now if you get near a target, they explode doing damage. Even though Bards are fairly aggressive with their positioning, most of the time you'll be trailing your party or avoiding the boss to save a teammate. These do great damage, but your opportunity to be up close to an enemy isn't a common occurrence. Prelude of Storm calls that a bunch of lightning pillars where you're standing that stuns enemies for 3 seconds and deals damage. Once again, this is in the same vein as the previous skill, aggressive and a bit out of place. But the stun can be valuable in a PvP situation with tripods set to make it a directional ability. Note Bundle will either send out a single instance or a group, depending on your tripod pickups, that deal low damage and reduce movement speed. It can be used to damage buff and reduce incoming damage but it's a skill shot with relatively slow travel time. You don't want inconsistency with perks like that, which is why we kind of avoid this. Prelude of Death has you remain stationary, dealing AoE damage to enemies and inflicting Death's End on them, which can assist in bursting a single enemy at random. It's not super consistent, keeps it from moving, and has a high cooldown. Now while I personally don't like this skill in PvE content, it is fantastic in PvP with tripods, as you can fear your opponent and get an extra damage. Finally, we have March which leaves behind a trail of notes as you move, attacking nearby targets and potentially increasing your own crit rate and move speed. Now in reality, when used, they feel incredibly weak and the buffs to your move speed are barely noticeable while channeling the skill in PvE content. In PvP, however, this can be an effective zoning skill while your other abilities are on cooldown. As I mentioned before breaking down all the skills, the Bard's special class resource comes in the form of the Serenade Meter, obtained through using skills and dealing damage to enemies. Ultimately, this gives you access to two core abilities for the Bard. Serenade of Courage is a team-wide buff that increases the damage of the Bard and all party members by either 5, 10, or 15% depending on how many meters are filled. Serenade of Salvation, on the other hand, is a potent, ticking burst heal for all party members that stand in the AoE by either 4, 6, or 8% over 14, 18, or 24 seconds depending on how many meters are filled. As I mentioned throughout the build guides, Tripods that provide melody increase can greatly speed up this resource generation. Your identity skills are essential tools for the Bard, providing your team with on-demand damage buffs for damage checks or an area form of healing when potions and shields aren't enough. Each needs a firm understanding of encounters and your team to know when you'll need to use them. Getting comfortable with the Bard certainly takes practice, especially being a support. You'll need to understand other classes' attacks, their big DPS windows, and know when to save teammates and prevent damage. One of the most important things that I think we can talk about here includes spell rotations and spell combos. The mobbing build is the best place to do this, since the concepts while leveling easily carry over to both offense and defensive playstyles going forward. Heavenly Tune should always start any damage focused rotation, because it amps all of your following spells for 8 seconds. Now follow this up with Dissonance straight into Stigma. These will run their course, ramping up their damage, and finish just around when your 8 second damage buff ends. Now right before it ends though, if you have time to weave Sound Holic in, 
you'll cap off all of your damage abilities on either a pack or a single target for massive damage. Now once that burst window is done, focus on buffing teammates or evading enemies till Heavenly Tune is back online. During this time is the perfect opportunity to rotate between either Sonic Vibration or Soundwave to keep enemies at bay, applying Wind of Music whenever you or a teammate may be in need of a shield. Sound Shock is on such a low cooldown that you can use that whenever you need poke damage on enemies. Now on the support end of things, because you aren't focused on damage, you instead just need to pay attention for your team's DPS windows or instances that they might be in danger. If you've taken Harp of Rhythm over Rhapsody of Light, make sure to keep it and Dissonance up at all times for that constant 10% damage amp and serenade meter generation. Then you'll focus on Sonic Vibration and Heavenly Tune for DPS windows, or Wind of Music and Guardian Tune to mitigate damage. Rhapsody of Light also slides right in here. Finally, Rhythm Buckshot should be reserved to counter a boss whenever they flash blue if you are close enough. Now with both of these builds, you need to keep with your team as close as possible, generally weaving between the threat and your teammates. The Bard essentially plays in melee range, even though it's a ranged class. Positioning and understanding mechanics is key to being a successful Bard, ensuring that you are staying alive and healthy to be able to focus that support on your team instead. Now this brings us to engravings. And if this is your first time even hearing about engravings, or you just want to understand them better, we have a handy guide here on the channel going over everything. Now you won't really experience these to their full potential until tier 3 content, but going forward, you'll want to start working towards a few in particular. For your class engraving, Desperate Salvation provides additional burst heal to your Serenade of Salvation. The reason this is so good is that when you have one bar of your Serenade meter filled, it's more efficient to just use your heal with this engraving than waiting for a 2 or even 3 meter effect. Maxing this engraving to tier 3 will give you a massive 24% max HP burst heal. Now for general engravings, Awakening is by far the most important for Awakening skill cooldown and uses. This allows you to get off your Awakening skill as much as possible, as this also helps you generate Serenade meter charges. Spirit Absorption is also important, as it increases your attack and movement speed by 15%, which can matter in a lot of close situations. Don't forget that attack speed also increases casting speed. Lastly, extra alternative engravings that work amazingly on Bard are Heavy Armor for tankiness and Max MP Increase as you can struggle with mana in later tiers. The Bard is easily one of the most fun and well-received support classes by players in Lost Ark. If you love to support your group and can get over the constant sound of harp chords every second, this class is insanely fun to play. A quick note at the end in terms of stat priority for a bard, because as you get to endgame, this will matter on your armor. For a solo mobbing build, a 70-30 split in crit and swiftness will do you well. For group PvE content, you'll want a 70-30 split in swiftness and specialization. And for those that want a PvP, just as a side note here, 1000 agility, 249 endurance, and 1 crit will serve you well in the arena. I also want to say that there is no end-all be-all when it comes to building out your characters. Because of the sheer scope of the content and the constantly changing challenges, it's impossible to say what a meta build would be on any character because things are always going to vary based on the content. With that in mind, I encourage you to try out the builds that I outlined above. I think it will set you on the right direction for enjoying the character and tackling a majority of the content of the game. But don't be afraid to change things up. You may find that you enjoy the class that much more because you built it your own way. Regardless of what class you play, I want to welcome you all to join the Legacy Gaming Discord. We've already amassed a massive community of Lost Ark players, always down to play. You can check out the link in the description below to join up and learn more. If you've been following along with our Lost Ark coverage, then you already know we've got a whole lineup of content coming your way. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to support the channel and help other people find our videos. Finally, if you like everything that we're doing here at Legacy Gaming and you want to support the channel just a little bit more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping us achieve our dream of making YouTube a full-time passion. That about wraps it up, everyone. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.